In a couple of days, Landspace will attempt to launch for the first time their Jutra 2 rocket. This is the first liquid-fueled commercial launch vehicle in China, and also one of the first methane-fueled rockets to enter commercial service on the planet. So what does the Jutra 2 architecture look like? Is the rocket reusable? And does Landspace have a chance of making it in the current very crowded Chinese launch landscape? I'm Sean Deville, and as always, let's find out. China has seen a fair share of commercial launch companies pop up in the past 10 years, with a lot of rockets currently under development. While most are still at a very early stage, a couple of them are very close to launching their liquid-fueled rockets, among which we have Landspace. Landspace was one of the very first Chinese commercial launch companies, co-founded back in June 2015 by Roger Zhang, who was this automobile financing executive, together with two more technical co-founders, which were Wu Shu Fan and Wang Jingming, with backgrounds in satellite manufacturing and launch. And just like many Chinese launch startups back in the day, Landspace started out by designing their own solid field rocket, the Jutra 1, capable of putting 300 kilograms into low Earth orbit. It was believed at the time that this would ease the company's learning curve with a more simple rocket design, while also benefiting from the possibility to buy off-the-shelf solid field engines directly from Chinese state-owned companies. Now, let's fast forward three years ahead. Landspace attempted an orbital launch of this rocket in October 2018, but this failed when one of the third stage attitude control systems malfunctioned. And in the end, this would be Landspace's only launch attempt with the Jutra 1, because after the launch, the company renounced solid field rockets altogether. Apparently, this was because Chinese state-owned companies had restricted sales of solid field engines, probably deemed too sensitive a technology. But this pivot away from solid was probably also because Landspace no longer believed in the economic viability of solid field rockets, which was a niche market in China that was getting increasingly crowded. Instead, they decided to go all in on liquid field rockets, which brings us to the Jutra 2. The Jutra 2 is a two-stage medium-lift liquid-filled launch vehicle burning liquid methane and liquid oxygen. It has a height of 49.5 meters, a diameter of 3.35 meters, and is capable of putting six tons into low Earth orbit and four tons into sun-synchronous orbit. Its propulsion is centered around the TQ-12 engine, which is an in-house developed 80-ton thrust methylox engine. This engine adopts a rather simple gas generator cycle architecture, as can be seen here with the pre-burner exhaust on the side. The first stage is equipped with a block of four TQ-12s, providing 268 tons of thrust at liftoff, while the second stage is equipped with a single TQ-12. To provide attitude control for the second stage, the Jutra 2 is currently fitted with vernier thrusters called the TQ-11, which are a smaller 10-ton thrust methlox gas generator cycle engine, which uses a design combining a single turbo pump and four separate combustion chambers. The nozzles of the TQ-11 can be gimbaled up to 25 degrees, providing torque in the roll, pitch, and yaw axis for the rocket. Now, the current version of the Jutra 2 has its flaws, among which the fact that the rocket is purely expendable, so the first stage cannot land and be reused. Some of the technologies are also perhaps a little bit old-fashioned, such as vernier thrusters. To work around this, Landspace is designing an upgrade of the Jutra 2 for the future. The TQ-12 engine is notably replaced by the improved TQ-12A, which adopts a more simple architecture with a modified and lighter turbo pump and combustion chamber. Additional valves were also added, increasing engine throttling capabilities to between 50 and 110%. Perhaps more importantly, Landspace has decided to ditch the vernier thrusters for the future for the second stage, decreasing the weight of the total rocket by 400 kilograms. The second stage will be using instead the newly developed YQ-10 attitude control system, which runs on hypergolic bipropellants. The second stage main engine is also improved and renamed the TQ-15A. This version has now thrust vectoring capabilities, meaning that the combustion chamber in the nozzle will have a gimbaling capability of plus or minus four degrees. The TQ-15 will also have a larger nozzle, and to avoid the pre-burner exhaust impinging on it, there were modifications that were made to re-inject the pre-burner exhaust directly into the main engine exhaust. Worth noting also, this has the added benefit of providing film cooling to the main nozzle because the fuel-rich pre-burner exhaust is generally cooler than the flow coming directly out of the combustion chamber. Now let's have a look at Landspace on a map. 
While headquarters are in Beijing, their production takes place in Huzhou City in Zhejiang province, where they've notably ramped up engine production to four TQ-12s a month, which would theoretically enable them to have an annual production of 12 Jutre-2 rockets. Parts are then shipped from the Huzhou facilities to Jiaxing, situated 100 kilometers to the east, for testing and final assembly. And finally, the Jutre-2 rockets are transported all the way across the country to the Zhou Train Satellite Launch Center in Inner Mongolia, where Landspace has built launch facilities for Methlox field rockets. Overall, I think this draws a rather positive and optimistic portrait of Landspace, but there are also some clouds ahead on the horizon. One significant question, for example, is with regards to how they plan to make the Jutre-2 reusable. In the past, they clearly showed mock-ups of a vertical takeoff, vertical landing Jutre-2 first stage, similar to a Falcon 9. But the thing is, the Jutre-2 has adopted a four-engine layout as opposed to the circular cluster of seven to nine engines adopted by SpaceX's Falcon 9 or similar reusable rockets. With Landspace's four-engine setup, it seems a little bit more challenging, perhaps, and more demanding for the engines. Another looming danger comes from domestic competition. While it seems that Landspace is going to be the first Chinese startup, maybe, to commercialize liquid-filled medium-lift rockets, you have Galactic Energy that has the Palace 1 rocket planned for late 2023, and iSpace has been working on the Hyperbola 2 with similar timelines. There's Space Pioneer with the Tianlong 2, there's Deep Blue Aerospace with the Nebula 1, and that's just mentioning the more advanced companies. And any repeated failure can also lead to severe repercussions. And iSpace, for example, who's failed three times in a row to launch the Hyperbola 1, was rumored to lose the support of several core investors investors over the past month and has reportedly had to reduce its workforce by half. Finally, competition could also come from China's state-owned companies, which have started to look a little bit more seriously at the domestic commercial launch market in the past two years. And we, for example, heard from people from the Chinese Academy of Launch Technology talking over the past year about adapting the Long March 5B and the Long March 7 for launching constellations into low Earth orbit. In any case, these are exciting times ahead for us space enthusiasts, so let's see which Chinese startup actually makes it and which ones will have to pivot away from launch. In land space, if you're listening, I'd be most happy to stream your launches onto YouTube, so if you're willing to share a video feed, do get in touch. As always, a special thanks to our Patreon members for their support, and if you'd like to help me do what I do, please consider joining our small Patreon community at patreon.com slash Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.